there guys, I'm Quacker Jack, and this is the Rough and Raucous 2016 Kawasaki Z1000. I am pumped because I have wanted to take one of these things out for a ride for so long now, and today we finally get to do our full review. I'll break it down into three sections. First, a good look around the bike and its specs. Then my ride out here and putting it through its paces out here in the twisties, before coming back for my final review. But before we get into all of that, I want to take a second to thank our friends over at Team Moto Kawasaki in Bowen Hills. They're my local motorcycle dealership. They let me take out this bike. If you're in the market for a new or used motorcycle or want to trade in your current bike, they are always looking to buy. So make sure to go and check them out and tell them that I sent you. All right, let's get into it. The thumping heart inside this thing is a 1043cc inline four cylinder, which throws out 142 horses at 10,000 RPM and 111 newton meters of torque at 7,300. That means it can hit the zero to 100K time in about two and a half seconds and get up to a top speed of 240. Kawasaki have also endowed it with 41 millimeter inverted shower forks at the front and a horizontal backlink gas charge shock at the rear both of which have adjustability. For stoppy bits, you get dual 310mm semi-floating pedal discs with radial mount four piston calipers and a single 250 at the back end. You'll also be sitting up moderately tall at 815mm on a bike that weighs 221kg with its 17 litre tank fully fueled. This one does have KO lightning pipes on its dual exhausts, but let's have a listen to how they sound. <laughs> Alrighty guys, well today you join me on the Angry Ant. <laughs> this is a 2016 Kawasaki Z1000. Now I am stoked to be on this thing. I've always wanted to ride one and today we get the chance. So I've actually already ridden up here but my microphone wasn't working on the way up. I gotta upgrade my audio game. But um, I'll give you some of my thoughts along the way and show you what this thing is capable of. Now it does weigh around 220 kilograms wet on the road but seriously right now I can't tell don't care <laughs> wow now this bike has got a 1043cc inline four cylinder that pumps out about 142 horsepower and 111 newton meters of torque and just seems to be in a perpetually bad mood. <laughs> this thing must have had some rice bubbles for breakfast because it is just all snap, crackle and pop. Three, three and a half thousand RPM 
it shows up here and when you get above that it goes up here so it's not bad but it's just a bit strange you can see it's starting to light up there when I go over that three and a three and a half thousand rpm even for around town riding right now like I'm trying to ride it quite slowly and tame to not annoy the locals but with these pipes on there it is loud it is making its presence known for sure <laughs> so this definitely feels like the thing that you'd sort of harass the neighbors with a um, bit of a ruffian okay yep nice how do you do here through a long sweeper So, what are my final thoughts? Well, this thing is a riot. No, seriously, you do not want to get on its bad side. It has got some serious balls to it. And the entire time I was riding, my adrenaline was high and my care factor low. It feels raw, it feels angry, and I like it. The motor has really got a grunt to it with a lot of torque all the way through. But when you get it into those higher revs, it really starts delivering. It's 140 or so horses isn't as much as some of the others in the class, but the smoothness here is commendable. It's not jerky or snatchy at all. And even though it's got the performance of a maniac, it's actually quite refined in its quality. This one has got the KO Lightning on its dual exhaust pipes and the raucous that it creates is something else. It sings at higher RPMs and has a really satisfying burble on the roll-off and downshift. 
it is getting to the almost too loud stage, but goddamn if it doesn't get your heart rate up. I was very impressed with the handling. When you're moving, you don't get a sense of the weight at all. The suspension is really good, and combined with the sort of compact riding position and small, short overall size means it is flickable and precise. It is definitely on the firmer side, and small bumps in the road will starting to have you hop around. This thing feels like it's on the hunt. Not for your life, but for every upcoming apex. The only time that I did start to feel the weight was under heavy braking, when I came into some corners with more momentum than I was expecting. The rear brake is fine, but again, the front one, very good. It does come with ABS, which I felt kick in a few times, but it wasn't too invasive. It's a pretty simple thing when it comes to rider aids and electronics. There really isn't any. I mean, besides the ABS, but I'm so fine with that. It adds to the raw feeling of it. The seat height and ergos fitted me nicely too. Besides the relatively thin seat, it was a good position for me. And let's just take a second to admire the styling here. I mean, it is a mean and angry looking bike. And that's very appropriate. It was a thrill to ride. And with this one coming in at 10 grand, it offers some real value. But there you have it guys, the legendary Kawasaki Z1000. Let me know your thoughts down in the comments below. I want to say a thank you for you guys for following along and to our mates over at Team Moto. Till next time, see ya.